Hello everyone, welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we mainly have Mars launches because I had two viewer tourists who wanted to go to Mars, D. Siski and Durlaf. And so they paid struts which were earned by watching the Twitch live stream. Uh, I believe I give 10 struts per hour. And to go to Mars was 500 struts. Uh, so they definitely spent a lot of time watching the stream before they got a chance for this trip. But anyway, first of all, we needed to send a station over to Mars, and that's what's launching here. And those are still Raptor boosters. I introduced this rocket in the previous video, but those were boosters with uh, seven Raptor engines each. Ultimately, I developed the Raptor 9 rocket or Unix rocket uh, that has nine engines and used that, that rocket as boosters for SLS. The upper stage is not the normal S upper stage for SLS, not the EUS. This is a nuclear upper stage with a Nerva 2 and a fairly large tank. You can see the shuttle mice that have finished their job and that is an orbit that will allow them to bring the SSMEs back. So that is a nominal return orbit for the little shuttle mice. They can't be too low with the periapsis, they don't have enough fuel, but they can are just that orbit, that's fine. That's They only need about 100, 150 meters per second for that and they have it. So there's uh, Nerva 2. Ultimately, I begin to replace this with my Timberwind engines, but not just yet. The uh, stage there is from my Kasei rocket uh, from a previous series. And so we use that for the transfer to Mars. It also completed orbit. And here we go. Ignition for the Mars transfer. It's a pretty good window. You can see it only costs about 3,600 meters per second to go to Mars on this window. Sometimes it can cost quite a bit more than that. So this was a good deal. And it was also a good deal on the capture on the Mars side. So I wanted to send as much as possible here. Uh, what we're using are Briz stages for the station. I had launched a Mars station in the previous video, but that one got stranded in low Earth orbit. Uh, we didn't do anything with that uh, for now, so we just did a relaunch with a new station. And I left the stranded station stranded for the time being, and we'll decide what to do with it later. So this is on its way successfully, and we didn't have a stage blowing up this time because I didn't use the inner stage that came with the SLS mod, I used my own inner stage for that. Now, Durlaf is on board our Skylab 2 station, so I needed to retrieve him so that he could go to Mars. And we sent Valentina, but... Well, that was an unconventional launch. Thankfully, I did not put colliders on that structure. And you can sort of see why that might have been wise of me. Uh, this is the Lynx rocket... Uh, sorry, the Lynx spacecraft on the Sujita rocket. Uh, this is from a previous series. Uh, methane oxygen engines on both stages. Uh, identical engines. There's five on the first stage, one on the second stage. And so you could sort of think of it as a Mephalox Falcon 5. Would be not inappropriate. We got a shader problem on this engine. It has an extendable nozzle. They're about 1,000 kilonewtons. And there goes the launch escape system. And the Lynx spacecraft is a custom spacecraft I made about the dimensions of Orion, but not as complicated. It, uh, it has more functionality in the service module, though. It's got a nicer service module, which is also methane and oxygen. It's methane and oxygen all the way on this one. For low Earth orbit to get to Skylab, we didn't need to fill up this service module, so that's good. Uh, using the vernier thrusters on the service module to turn around here and then light the main engine which is an ED1. The vernier thrusters are ED3s. The main engines of the Sajita rocket are ED4s. Those are engines I developed. And so here we are rendezvousing with Skylab 2 and its Unity module there. Docking to Unity here in the dark because that always seems to be how it is for me but there we go and docked so Valentina got to the station we transfer Durlaf into the pod and we move away simple as that so very very brief visit to Skylab here and deorbiting 
the verniers exist to help this pod turn around. Its RCS is not that powerful. It's for very fine adjustments. So off goes the service module per normal methods with these spacecraft. And here we come in through the atmosphere. Very normal trajectory. We're headed over to the Gulf of Mexico there, south of Texas, uh, south of Houston. And then here we are passing by Cape Canaveral. And finally, all the plasma effects. And everything ends up safe. The aero cap always has trouble separating. I need to work on the colliders on that. The colliders are on the part properly, it just always gets caught on the docking port there. Anyway, but still safe and splashing down. So Durlaf is back to the surface and ready to go for the Mars mission. So without further ado, of course, we prepare to send Durlaf on the Mars mission. Uh, the Lynx capsule, I put it at the top of this, but it's not separatable. It's not a real separate capsule. Durlaf and Desiski are a crew, so we've got the Lynx at the top. We've got an inflatable module that's pre-inflated, actually. And uh, supplies. And off they go. I decided to just keep using the same rocket with the hydrogen nuclear upper stage in place of EUS and the shuttle mice and the Raptor 7 boosters, if you will, uh, because that allowed us to get these missions off quicker instead of switching between rockets. And so I sized the missions so that they could make full use of the rocket. It was simpler that way. So here we go. So again, the links, then the inflatable, then the supplies, and then there's a stage there that is meant to capture them into orbit around Mars. And that's identical to the Sujita upper stage that we used on the Lynx launch. So here the Nerva 2 again, making orbit. Barely on the periapsis there, okay. And then the transfer burn, about the same as last time, 3600 meters per second. I use the engine turn here because the Nuclear engines, they take a long time to spool up, but that's handy for actually turning. So they're not full thrust initially, but they can still turn us. Needed to finish this burn with the ED-4V, uh, the ED-4 with the extendable nozzle. And that was done, though. Did we have enough to capture into orbit around Mars? Well, this time, having plotted the mid-course adjustment, I decided to check. So... Pulling the retrograde handle, it seems to be making orbit pretty easily, and a loose orbit costs us very little, actually. So, yeah, we have enough. Uh, boil off is a concern. Boil off is a concern if it does boil off when we're not paying attention to it, and we probably won't be paying attention to it because we've got so many other missions to manage. But we'll see. Uh, we could be in big trouble when we get to Mars. We don't know. This is an additional supply mission. It's just uh, one of the MPLMs that, uh, that were sent by the shuttle to the ISS and we filled it with food, water, and oxygen and added a Sajita stage for capture on Mars and launched it on the same rocket. And again, my goal was to get as many of these Mars things off as quickly as possible, so just adapting what we had already done and getting it on its way. And off go the boosters. And then, of course, the very harrowing separation of the fairings. Always worried about those. They do cut it close and... Yeah, but in this case, all good, as it was the previous times. It's always nice when they're consistent. And then we have the end of the shuttle mouse stage. Uh, a little bit low on, on that periapsis this time, a little bit slow. They probably would have struggled to be able to get back to Cape Canaveral for a landing or anything like that. But we have to make do. So here we go again, same transfer situation. We are using quite a lot of nuclear engines in expendable mode here. I mean, just sort of... Having them do one burn and then tossing them aside, it's one of the benefits of not being in career mode. Uh, this sandbox, so I can do things like that. 
I mean, you don't know if we mass produce nuclear engines, maybe they'll be fairly cheap. Well, the, the fissile material is not exactly the cheapest thing in the world. Anyway. So we make that transfer and I've got the mid-course adjustment applied and I'm taking a look at the boil off. I think I'm particularly noting that the tank is in the shadow. It's on the opposite side of that large module from the sun and yet there's still boil off, right? So it doesn't seem cold or anything. Anyway, in the previous video we had left Raider Nick and Madfurt in limbo around the Earth in a high orbit, not having a periapsis that was for re-entry, we just brought the periapsis in. I separated the orbital module, but that was where our food, water, and oxygen was, I hadn't checked that. The flow was not correct. I would have rather had, of course, the descent module have the last of the food, water, and oxygen instead of the orbital module, but that was not how it was. And so now we have none and no way of getting it. But anyway, I separated off the the service module there, which is the Briz stage plus the KIS container, which had the solar panels for me, the mirror core that we have around the moon. And then Madford died because there's no oxygen. Interestingly enough, Raider Nick did not die because there's no food, water, and oxygen, and still isn't dying, uh, which is interesting. Uh, Raider Nick. Sort of ironically, a creator, uh, so a viewer who has modded many Soyuz things, yet this is not one of Raider Nick's Soyuz things. This is from a different mod. So uh, apparently this is trying to kill him, though not with the food, water, and oxygen, with the heat in this case. Somehow Raider Nick is surviving the food, water, and oxygen situation. I sort of tried descent mode and that was a bad idea. Well, maybe... Maybe Raider Nick would have died anyway, but Raider Nick died after I enabled the scent mode and it started wiggling around and yeah, well, that was interesting. I don't know why he didn't seem to need food bar and oxygen, but don't worry, we, we take care of our tourists through reincarnation. Uh, yes, they will regenerate uh, if we are talking about Doctor Who, oh, um, re... Whatever, whatever Kerbals do when they come back to life. Anyway, so we will see Raider Nick again, but he did perish in this case. And with that demise and our Mars missions on their way, we'll see how that goes. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.